All right, so welcome to our final video in the subject of digital audio theory, for at least for a little while. Um, and this one is going to be on dither. And as I hinted to about in the last video, this is something that you either know or you don't, and that audio professionals do this instinctively, and while most amateurs have never heard of it before. And it makes a significant difference in terms of how your audio sounds, uh, especially in low resolution environments or with quiet sounds, it can actually add a pretty significant amount of quality to it. Uh, a little bit of preamble here. Um, so really in the 1990s, um, we saw the advent of digital audio takeover. I'll write this in pink to make it seem very cool. Digital audio revolution um, became computer-based, right? In the 80s, we have a lot of digital audio. We have synthesizers and samplers. Um, but really by the 1990s, we saw it all about the computer. Well, there was a problem with this. Um, the problem is that all the computers, for the most part, um, we're recording at, we're, we're, we'll say we're limited by their system resources, which basically forced most people with a home computer or a studio computer to be running at a highest of 16 bits, um, coupled with the fact that most audio converter chips, right, things, little devices that would actually take and convert analog audio and convert it into digital were also limited by this limitation as well. We already saw in the last video, 16 bits means you can never get more than 96 decibels of dynamic range. Actually, it's really 98, but go with it. Um, if you follow our formula, you'll get 96. We have about 96 decibels dynamic range, which is less than the human ear, right? Furthermore, uh, we know that every time you do something to audio, you're going to lower the quality a little bit. So if you're doing a lot of processing and a lot of editing, turning stuff down, right, really, you might be actually taking your 16-bit quality file. And at the end of the day, it might only be really 14-bit after you're done working with it. So you take all this, you've got this 14-bit audio file, and uh, lo and behold, you know, 14 multiplied by 6 is only going to be about, is that 84? Right? This is, this is, you know, marginally better than FM radio um, sound quality. So we have this great new, all these technology, and yet we still have pretty subpar recording audio. And there are a lot of engineers, and there still are a few, but they're dying out, literally. Um, you know, who believe, you know, analog audio is so much better than digital audio. Digital audio sounds brittle and fake and not really realistic enough. Well, all these are reasons why. And it really wasn't until the end of the 90s, early 2000s, where two things started happening. First thing, uh, we started to have 24-bit audio uh, become the norm, and at least having computers and systems fast enough to run 24-bit audio recording sessions. And number two, the advent of dither. Right, and this is a little extra algorithm um, that's allow us going to still use some of our 16-bit and older formats, um, but be able to put higher information into it more accurately. Okay, so hopefully most of you guys understand now the benefits of adding more bits, right? You get an increased vertical resolution in any sort of information you're trying to store. Um, but I suspect that none of you yet understand dither. And dither is very, very uh, counterintuitive because essentially, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one of the coolest things about it is it's essentially we're going to add a type of noise, right? We're actually going to add noise to our recording to make the resolution higher. And this may seem really strange, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a, of, a, of a thought experiment problem. Let's say you have the numbers 1 through 10. But the number, and you're trying to tell your number, you're trying to, you're trying to give them a number for something, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what it is, but you're just trying to tell him a certain number, but the number you're trying to tell him is four and a half, right? So you're trying to convey four and a half to your friend, but you only have the numbers one through 10. So if you say five, you know, it's gonna be too high. If you say four, it's gonna be too low. Uh, but for whatever reason, you absolutely need to convey four and a half. Right, this is essentially a, essentially a problem with resolution, right? You only have 10 digits, and yet you really need twice that many, right? You need to get to the halfway points. Well, what if I told you you could, you could spend as long as you're with your friend as, as you needed to, right? You could, you could tell him multiple numbers, and as long as he gets the overall impression that the number you're trying to tell him is four and a half, uh, he'll get the message. So instead of saying, you know, you know, trying to figure out a way to convey that there's a half point here, um, what if you just told your friend four, no five, no four, no five, no four, no, wait, five, no, five, four, five, four. You get the idea, right? Just sort of alternating back and forth. Just whenever you say one number, sort of correct to the other number. You know, after 
this goes on for some period of time, your friend is just going to say, well, screw it. Let's just call it four and a half, right? You're actually going to have conveyed this four and a half figure, right? Without ever saying four and a half. If you just say four, five, four, four right? If you just keep confusing him with fours and fives, essentially. Not a, you're, you're probably not a very nice friend. You should probably just learn to say four and a half, right? But, you know, it could work. Uh, and it totally works in terms of digital audio. Um, and this is true. Dither is something that isn't just, uh, you know, for audio, it works for all types of digital media, uh, including photography, and um, and it also can even work in analog media too. Um, and I'll show you a little bit how that's done. Um, here's here's a quick visual analogy. I'm going to go to Wikipedia, and you guys can go to Wikipedia and see this for yourself. Um, check out this little section here. Um, let's say you have two colors, red and blue, but the color you really want is purple. Well, how do you get purple if you only have red and blue? Well. If you alternate them really quickly, what's the overall impression that you give? Can I click on this? I can, but it doesn't make it any bigger, I guess. Uh, what's the overall impression that you give to the viewer? Well, it looks like purple. Doesn't that look like purple? Except you're not seeing any purple whatsoever. You're only seeing red and you're seeing blue. Uh, you're actually sort of fooling the eye into seeing this color that isn't there. And similarly, uh, what we want to do right, is essentially fool the ear into hearing amplitude levels that aren't really there. Uh, and it's actually not just the ear, we're actually really fooling the computer, I guess, we're really fooling the storage system into seeing amplitudes of frequencies that aren't really there. So this 4.5 is a pretty good example. Um, but I mentioned before, it's really, we're turning, we're taking noise um, to make the resolution higher. And I'm going to go back to that Wikipedia page and give you one more visual example before we hear this in audio. Um, but here we have this nice picture of a kitty cat. Will this make it bigger if I click it? Nope, same size. All right. When well, we see this nice kitty cat right here, and uh, lots of different colors, right? We've got some green, yellow, and beige, and look at all the different shades of gray. There's actually this zoomed in portion of the cat uh, right on the forehead. You can actually see how many different shades of gray and white there are. Hopefully that's showing up on your screens as good as it is for mine. Lots and lots of different colors. Uh, and in fact, you know, thousands, millions of colors really make up this photo. Um, just a quick analogy here, right? Photography and audio files, at least digital photography files and digital audio files are actually very similar in a lot of ways. In audio, we have a sample, right? Every, we take a measurement every so often. In photography, they do the exact same thing. The sample is actually called a pixel, right? They just take a measurement of color every so often. We take a measurement of amplitude. Um, but really, you could, you could just take a, a digital audio file and read it as a picture and vice versa if you had the right software. Um, the information, I mean, of, of course, if you have a, a recording of a guitar, won't make a picture of a guitar, right? It doesn't work that way, but you'll be able, you'll get a picture out of it. All right, anyway, um, let's see what happens if we try to reduce the number of colors in this photo, right? If we just round all the colors to the closest color, let's say for whatever reason you don't get millions of colors and you only get eight colors, or I think it's 16 colors, or whatever this one is. Um, check out this kitty cat. He looks kind of psychedelic. Uh, but more importantly, he doesn't really look like a picture anymore, right? He looks almost like a painting or a, or a poster. Um, you get these very dark visual lines uh, that weren't there. Do you see these vertical lines? Right? Uh, nowhere on this neck of the original cat do you see a vertical line. It's just sort of one big giant gradient from left to right. Well, here we actually are introducing these new lines of distortion, right? We actually introduced a new texture. It looks like you know, it almost looks like there's multiple cat heads or something, right? There's this, there's just new lines there. Where do they come from? Well, uh, let's, before we round all the colors to their closest color, right? So we get these visual distortions. Let's instead add a whole bunch of noise. And by noise, I just mean random fluctuations of color up and down. So let's take this color and we'll, we'll make it a little bit brighter, make this color a little bit darker, brighter, darker, and just, just sort of randomize the whole photo. Uh, sort of like taking your friend and right and saying four, five, four, five, right? And just instead of being able to say four and a half, we're just gonna we're just gonna move four and a half out to fours and fives randomly. All right, and then check out check out this photo, right? Here we have sixteen colors again. Uh, it's only sixteen colors, but how does this cat compare to this cat? Well, this is a lot better. We don't get those lines anymore on the neck coming down like this. Instead, we actually see the gradient again. And how, and even though it's only 16 colors, right, it's because the colors are more blended because of that random noise, we actually get a higher resolution. Now, it is grainy, right? There is a drawback here. We do have noise now in our recording where we had this very smooth, dark black that was, you know, not bad, but... You know, it's kind of nice, actually. It's actually very grainy over here. We have a lot of little speckles of 
um, almost looks like dust or something. Um, but at the same time, it looks like more like a photo again. And uh, we have some other algorithms for different types of dithering, but ignore those, ignore those for now. We can get this, uh, this cat looking pretty nice um, with different types of dither and very limited number of colors. Uh, but still, I think the most impressive thing is this picture only has 16 colors in it, right? And yet it doesn't look like this. This is what we normally think of when something only has 16 colors, right? Very blockish. Um, but because everything is so well blended and all these little specks are um, gradations of those 16 colors, then we get a very nice image. Okay, let's see this in audio. So let me close this. Let's go back to Cubase. I've, uh, I've taken the liberty here of taking our guitar track we've been listening to in the last couple of videos. And uh, I have lowered the amplitude just a little bit and then bit crushed it down to eight bits and then raised the amplitude again just to sort of magnify the amount of bit crushing. Here's what this guitar part sounds like when it's been reduced to a little less than eight bits of quality. I should, let me play it first without any uh, lowering of quality. Here's what it actually sounds like. on a little bit of a loop there. All right, let's lower the quality. All right, we had this problem in the last video with, with lower bit depths, right? It can't accurately produce the waveform, so we get a lot of noise, we get distortion, especially in quiet parts, it even cuts out. Right in there, you can hear it cutting in and out right on this section. Right, like, you know, that nastiness. Uh, so not very accurate, right? We're missing a lot of information, especially right there. That's, that's pretty bad, very bad quality. Okay. Before we lower the quality, right? With this bit crusher, let's add dither. Oops. And before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about it. This is a dither that comes with Cubase. This algorithm is by a company named Apogee. Um, they're a very well known, um, you know, audio company particular for, particularly known for their converters and dither. Um, let's turn it on. Um, but before we do, I guess, I guess before, again, we do, uh, dither is going to add random noise essentially, right? So you're instantly going to tell dither is on because there's a giant amount of noise on it. And I'm also using a limiter here to boost the amount of dither effectively. So this noise is way, way overemphasized than it would be in a normal recording. Okay, so keep that in mind. But if we do this, this is going to help you hear the dither and hear what the dither does. So again, don't <laughs> your if you use dither in your actual recordings, it's never going to sound like this. Okay. All right. So you hear that noise there. That's just going to go. Listen to that same passage now with dither turned on. Now, even though there's a giant amount of noise in the background, that guitar was crystal clear. Let me, I'll do it with dither on again, I'll do it with off, and I'll put it back on. Listen to the quality of the guitar. The guitar is super, super clean with the dither on. Even though there's a lot of noise, it's really clear. All right, so did you hear the difference? It's remarkable. I mean, it's almost like magic. Now, of course, I'm magnifying. Let me turn off the limiter. And let me also put my uh, my dither on a more acceptable amount. Let's put it on 16 bits and turn my dither back on. Turn that limiter off. This is, right now you're actually, if, if you can hear noise right now, that's the actual dither working. Most of the time when you're using dither, right, you're using it, I'm not, you're not boosting the hell out of it. Um, you're doing it very subtly. The amount of noise that it adds is very negligible. But the increase of quality of, of especially quiet sounds is very desirable. Um, here's just the original recording again with dither turned on, 16-bit dither turned on, that is. Now, in this case, even though there, we're adding dither, it's actually not really doing anything. And the reason is because you only want to add dither when you're going from a higher quality to a lower quality. Uh, if you guys remember, we said we can never really, you know, whenever we do anything to our audio, we're always sort of be going to be lowering the quality. Well, if we have to lower the quality anyway, so for instance, let me turn the page here. If we are going from a 24-bit recording, which is what most of you guys should be recording at, 
all the way down to a 16-bit audio quality. In other words, to put it on a CD, right, or, or uh, you know, just, just make a finished product that people can buy and sell. <coughs> takes up less room. Essentially what we're doing is for every sample, right? For, we talked about samples a couple of videos ago. Um, we have 24 of them, right? So a 24 bit number will be 24 zeros and ones. Let's see, is that 24, three, four? I don't know, one, four, eight, six, 12, 16, 20, it's only 20. This goes on for another four digits, all right? 24 bit number, and we effectively need to convert it into a 16 bit number. In other words, we need to lose eight of these bits. Uh, these bits just need to disappear. And whenever we lower our resolution, we're effectively lowering the quality. Um, so we just lost all that information, right? Well, uh, sort of. But if we add some noise first, we're effectively going to add random fluctuations to this data such that these bits will affect these first couple bits here. Occasionally, that noise will cause this bit and this bit to be a one, where it wouldn't have had these bits never been there in the first place. So in other words, by introducing sort of these random rounding errors, right, introducing this noise, we can effectively have information that should have been cut out when we went from a high quality to a low quality still actually affect our low quality uh, signal. And this is actually going to greatly increase our signal integrity. Um, it's going to, it's especially, again, this is most effective at quiet sounds or sounds that use very few bits. Um, it's going to help everything sound nicer. But the key is you only should be using dither when you're going from a high bit resolution to a low bit resolution. And there are some other uh, times you, sh you can apply dither too, but basically if you're going from a high quality to a low qu quality and, you're, and you want to preserve as high quality as possible, use dither. Uh, a lot of applications do this automatically. I think Pro Tools, I think it defaults with dither on. Um, Digital Performer defaults with dither on. Cubase, you have to add it as an effect. Um, sonar, I don't remember what Sonar does now. I haven't used it in probably about 10 years. Um, but anyway, the point is, uh, this is something that you can use to make your audio sound better, to make it sound more clear, uh, to sort of get over that resolution change when we go from 24 bits to 16 bits, which is normally what happens when you mix down audio, right? Because you have all your tracks and you record them all super high quality, and now you want to put on a CD, give it to grandma. Well, you need to find the best possible way to put it to 16 bits without losing quality. And uh, that's where Dither is going to come in and help. Okay, this is going to conclude our digital audio series um, for a little bit. I think the next uh, few tutorials I'm going to add are going to be more like specific problems and, and, and uh, creative projects to do in the studio, how to make a certain sound, those sorts of things. Uh, I hope to see you uh, in those videos very soon.